In a phenomenal turn of events, Bitcoin is now 4% away from the peak in January at $49,000. Does this mean Bitcoin is going to explode to the upside? What is the possibility of further downside? Have we run out of time to accumulate altcoins or is there still a little left in the tank to the downside? Today's video is going to be one of the most interesting ones that I have put out for some time. There is a number of indicators telling us that the markets should roll over, should, but they're doing the opposite. We're seeing price continue to go up on Bitcoin. We see price continue to go up on the S&P 500, hitting a new all-time high, new all-time high on the NASDAQ, new all-time highs on the Dow Jones, new all-time highs for Australia and probably wherever you are around the world, there's plenty of new all-time highs. So let's dive into that in today's video and also wish everyone a happy Lunar New Year, happy Chinese New Year. And I've got some data to get through for the Lunar Cycle as well for BTC coming up. But of course, we also have the old coin markets uh, looking at the timing of where we currently sit for these 28 X returns. And it's 28 because yesterday was 27. Okay. Hit the like and subscribe button. You know where you're at. Your home of macro cycle analysis, studying the past, forecast the future. We're looking at Bitcoin stocks, the real estate cycle, and of course, our degenerate loves, the altcoins. Let's kick it off with another happy Chinese New Year. Let us know in the comment section if you are celebrating or uh, just planning to go out and have a look at any of the festivities going on out there. While you do that, links in the top of the video description for our free crypto and economic report coming out in just a few days time. All right, let's kick it off with the data. As I said in the intro, there is a lot of data, a lot of warning signs that are suggesting a turn is around the corner. Now, I hate saying that term. The charts have been up. The trend has been up. The GAN swing indicator continues to print higher highs and higher lows. That is our primary trading tool. Link to that is in the top of the video description with a seven day free trial. So no matter what we think, feel, expect, shoulds, when we follow the data, it is saying up and the swing indicator is one of the best tools to use because it takes away that emotion and the hopes of certain things and just prints what the market is doing. Higher highs, higher lows is an uptrend. There's no other way around it. It's an objective view of the market and basically all the markets are doing that right now. But let's have a look at some of the data that suggests there are some warning signals, technical warnings are spiking. Uh, in this case, it's for the NASDAQ. Technical warnings are stacking up on the NASDAQ. This is just to keep a level head around uh, how much the market has gone up and basically just trying to balance the outlook here when it comes to the markets. So we've got technical warnings cycling from zero to eight. Essentially, this is just going through multiple technical warnings. Uh, it stacks up here when it comes to looking at sentiment trader. You'll have one warning saying it should be turning over, uh, rolling over, then two, three, four different warnings, which you're not going to go through in detail. But this particular one says here, when it gets to eight, what typically happens? Now it's looking at six to 12 months later. And we want to keep a balanced view here. I've, I've given you a lot of data that shows in 12 months time, uh, the markets should be higher than what they were when they opened in January of 2024, looking at that as being uh, one of my forecasts for the end of 2024, markets will be higher than where they opened. But looking at this data here, when you've got eight technical warnings cycling from zero to eight, 22 signals, six months later, 50% of the time. So it might not be the best indicator. You probably want to see more than 50%, but essentially uh, the market was only positive 50% of the time here. Average max loss, 14 to 20 percent and that is for the nasdaq it's interesting interesting to see where these technical uh, indicators and warnings came up in the market you can see some of the peaks here were 2007 before the nasdaq rolled over and of course the rest of the markets around the world also rolled over at that point you had uh, a few warnings at the peak in 2000 so the dot-com bubble market rolled over from that point as well but then you also had some that were on the way up to the next big top so let's zoom in on that so we're gonna have a look you got a few going back here in 2015. There were warnings. You had a little bit of a rollover in the medium term. So sort of your one, two weeks, one, two, three months as it's got down here. 
but it continued up from that point and it basically just stalled out for a year or two. Another warning, market kept going up from that point. Another warning, 2018, market rolled over, but then again, back up from that point. Another couple of warnings getting into that peak of uh, early 2000 before the uh, the COVID drop. And that was a very swift move to the downside before we had a big, big, big move to the upside. Another couple of warnings coming in at the peak of uh, late 2021 for the NASDAQ and the market rolled over from that point. So it's a 50-50 reading there. Maybe it's a short-term warning signal like we've been looking at here, but I don't want to go too much into the maybes while the chart is still saying up, while the indicator is still showing up, because if you are trading these markets, then you just have to go with what the market is giving you. You have to go with those signals for your own trading plans. And so far, if you've been entering on the breakout of the swing top, like here in December, uh, again in early January, and then again in February, eventually one will be a loss, but the majority of them, well, you've basically been up that entire time, trail your stops underneath each of the swing bottoms, and essentially the profits are locked in from that point. So that's how simple it is to use the GAN swing indicator. As I said, there's a link in the top of the video description with a seven day free trial showing you how to use that to lock in profits, how to enter and how to exit the market as well, as safely as possible and in the most simple fashion that I know when it comes to trading. Now, moving from those technical warnings in the midterm, looking at the longer term forward returns, S&P 500, when 72 trading days were up 22%. Now, this doesn't happen very often, as you can imagine. 72 trading days, uh, I think, is roughly about three to four months. And what happens after that point? Well, 100% of the time, with only a few data points here, 10 of these data points, uh, three and six months later, the market was up 100% uh, uh, of the time. One month later, however, it was only a 60% win rate of the market being higher than where it was when this uh, indicator went off. So you got 72 trading days, 22% increase on the uh, S&P 500. So this is the latest one here, the 11th date. Now, 12 months later, it was an 80% hit rate. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't exactly perfect, but 80% is a really good result. So we could potentially expect in 12 months time, the markets to be higher than where they currently are now. But in the interim, there could be some volatility. Now I've always said could be, I hate doing that, but I just wanna be cautious with how the markets have continued to progress from these levels. Now the two that didn't work out for the S&P 500, you can see with 2019, the market was only 8% down. Basically it had gone through the COVID crash and then the market quickly recovered from that point. We all know how fast that happened. And basically a couple of months later, September, October, it was higher than that price. Uh, so if you went to 14 months, it would be positive. Looking at 1987, you had that uh, Black Monday market dumped 50% in a day or two. And then for the next few years, it was just up and up and up from that point. So although it was 14%, I don't think it was too long before it was back in the positive from that uh, particular reading either. So it's a time to be cautious in the markets if you're trying to look for an entry point. But the worst thing, what I could almost guarantee on this is you don't want to be shorting in an uptrend. So trying to short this market like trying to be some sort of hero, a, Ma a Michael Burry hero, the biggest short, the great short, whatever the movie was, this guy was shorting everyone else's money through one of the biggest re uh, real estate bull markets of all time. That was basically this movement here. And he was trying to short the market from 2005 into that peak. Now on the chart, it doesn't look like much there, but if you were living through that time, I can guarantee you it was phenomenal moves for uh, many other stock markets around the world, but in particular real estate and real estate was going absolutely wild. So the one of the worst things you can do is short a market as it's rising. And if it's in new all time high territory, trying to short that thing every single time you see one tick down. So although we don't know when this is going to turn because the indicators are up, one thing I can say for sure is you do not want to be on the wrong side of the market. And there are very simple things that you can do, like do not short a rising market. And basically, if it's in a new all-time high territory, that's going to be another key area not to short at. The probabilities are heavily stacked against those who continue to try and buck the trend. So for Bitcoin right now, we're seeing it hit $47,000, 4% away from the $49,000 top that came in at the ETF. 
Now, one thing that stands out to me about this rise, and again, I am cautious here. I hate that. But again, cautious because the volume has been lacking. Now, we can say for last week that uh, because the volume was low, we also had a low price range here. But for this week, which essentially we're at the weekend now, so Saturday, Sunday, typically we don't see a lot of volume coming in, so a lot of action coming into the market. Uh, there is still two more days, but essentially we've seen the market move up pretty significantly, nearly 11%. Uh, total range for this week has been uh, about $2,000 from the low to the high. We haven't hit that high point yet, but in terms of the volume, it is pretty well lacking for the, the move that it's had to the upside. Now, of course, any scenario can happen here. We're just detectives trying to figure out what happens on the right-hand side of the chart, the black side of the chart. And what you'd want to see for the bulls is a break above and a hold above $49,000 relatively soon. I'd say by the end of this week or next week. Otherwise, we could be in a situation uh, like what happened at the peak of March and April and like what happened at the all-time high and like what happened at the previous old all-time high, the two major all-time highs that we saw during the uh, 2021 bull market. So what is that? Well, I'm just looking at the volume that the market put in at those peaks. And then you can see the volume that came in as the market ro uh, rose. So that came out of the banking crisis, nice, big, strong volume. But as it tried to break out into a new high, so it did hit a new high here, so a fresh high, the following week was a very quick re quick reversal underneath those prices. And the volume just was not there to support the move to the upside. So that's what we don't want to see if you are a major bull expecting these prices never to come back underneath uh, the current uh, price level, sort of that sort of mid $40,000 level. So that's what you don't want to see. Nice and clear. You want to see more volume come into this market as it breaks out, and that's if it breaks out of the $49,000 level. If not, you could expect that the market would come back and reverse here because it's just waiting to build up again. So in the short term, it could be bearish, but the longer term, it just needs some more time to uh, build up, accumulate some more strength before it can start to push out. And you can see that's exactly what happened through April, uh, basically March, into October here. So it was about a seven month period where it attempted to break out, volume was low, it came back, tested those prices again, started to build another campaign to the upside. You can see the market tried to pick up, it got a little more volume in as it pressed higher, but then it just couldn't do it. Those next few weeks, lowered volume, this bar here was uh, lowered volume again compared to the breakout bar, and then the market continued to fall from that point. It had to reaccumulate, test its strength again to the upside. Then you got the strength in the up bars here that broke out. So that's what you want to see. If this is going to break 49 and go to 50, 55, 60, whatever, that's what you want to see here. Big volume on the way out. Break through those tops, high close, big volume. But what we're currently seeing is a lowered volume on this move to the upside. So it could push a little bit higher here. The important part is going to come down to the closing price and the volume. So keep those two things in mind. If we take a look back at the previous tops, you can see from the move up into January of 21, nice big strong volume. It wasn't followed through. And basically the sellers got in, uh, got a hold of that, pulled the market back. And basically didn't really go much further in that cycle. That was basically all of the hype for Bitcoin ended in roughly January or February because you can see the price just didn't push any higher. The excitement was there, the party was still going, cryptos were going crazy, but Bitcoin didn't have anything left in the tank. And that's on a macro sense here, okay? So we're looking at the, the longer term, but for now, in the shorter term, you can see the same or similar patterns occurring when it comes to high prices and the potential breakouts. So we're looking at what you do wanna see for a breakout if the price is gonna go higher, and what you don't wanna see if you're hoping for that breakout, but it just doesn't eventuate, and this is what you would see if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't make it past those points, you see the market volume dry up on the way up. So there you got these two little bars here, lowered volume. The market tries to push higher, increased volume, reversal back under that price, and again it pushes lower, breaks a swing bottom, tries to recover again, volume increasing, but nowhere near as high as where it was when it was going up previously, and market rolls over. Same thing happened again. You can see this uh, this lowered volume here at the all time high is roughly about the same where we currently sit now. So you can see that volume here and then go across to the all time high. There's a similar sort of volume. With the potential weakness 
in the background of this rally on Bitcoin, we do know what we need to see. We need what we need to see for the breakout to the upside for some strength. And in case it is a false breakout to the upside, what you need to know as well. Now, before we get onto the old coins, quick shout out to the channel sponsors, links in the video description for Bybit and BitGet, depending on which one you want to use for your own trading, up to $30,000 on their sign up bonuses. Links down below will also get you access to our free trading workshops that are coming up. So if you use those links, we'll let you know when those trading workshops are ready. They are just around the corner. ETH BTC is a good one to kick off the altcoins with these 28 X's because I mean, yesterday's video was 27 X. Why not? Let's go up one more X. Now the low here is probably a month or two away. If we're only comparing it to the previous cycle, that to me is basically get ready because for Bitcoin, it's crazy to think that, well, maybe this thing could take off here. Uh, and then push those altcoins down a little further against their Bitcoin value like ETH BTC. But for the current timing itself on Bitcoin and altcoins, it might only be short lived. And like we talked about with the bottom price for Bitcoin or where Bitcoin could correct to, we're only looking for mid to high $30,000 because the corrections are basically dead on point to what it's done every single time on this move up from the cycle low, 20 to 22%. This time was almost like dead in the middle, 21 and a half percent. So we're not expecting major, major corrections, uh, basically just sort of short moves. So if you're in the long game, you don't care if the price goes to 38 and you don't care buying at 47, then it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about that. But if you do get worried about every single little move, whether it's up or down, then maybe you want to know what the possibilities are in the price uh, coming up. So for Ethereum, we are now 25 months from the alt, well, not the, the cycle high in December of 2021, ETH against Bitcoin. So this was the top of the strength of Ethereum against Bitcoin. That happened in December 2021. Bitcoin put in its top USD price in November, so a month earlier. Now we've been down for 25 months. We're into our 26th month in February. Last cycle, Ethereum peaked out earlier on here in June 2017 and to get to its lowest point against the Bitcoin value it took 27 months. So essentially that's telling us that the low if we did exactly the same timing would be in March of 2024 which then the following month would be the halving and things start to reaccumulate and build another uh, base from that point leading into the next peak. And so if timing again was to work out basically to a T that's potentially what we would expect. And the pricing on ETH would be somewhere between sort of four and a half ish percent up to where we currently sit at about five and a half percent. So we're really not far off that low point. It's mainly just that timing of when things are ready to move. That for the altcoin cycle is probably the most exciting because that also lines up with the timing on altcoins. Now, I've still got a big thing to get through here when it comes to uh, Bitcoin interest as well, because that is badly lagging for this move to the upside. That's that's a little bit interesting as well. Anyway, total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. Looking at this timing, we're potentially another month away from uh, this low or a higher low forming for the altcoin market. This would put us roughly around the same uh, time last cycle where we had the COVID crash and then the market recovered from that point. So 15 months from the cycle low would put us into March of 2024. 15 months from the previous cycle low was March uh, 2020, which was the COVID crash bottom. And then the markets basically took off from that point. And so this time round, although the cycle's uh, similar and they repeat and rhyme and all that sort of thing. This time round, however, we're seeing altcoin prices much higher than they were in the previous cycle. You can see the low came in, they based out a little higher, about 30 billion. They based out again, roughly 40 billion. They dropped in the COVID crash back down to 20 billion. But this time round, you had the, the low and then higher lows, and it looks like we'll put in an even higher low yet again. So in terms of the pullback, anything above roughly 400 to $450 billion is going to be a very solid higher low for altcoins, which will set it up for that next stage of this massive altcoin season, which I'm still expecting based on what we can see here in the charts and that strength forming with the higher lows. This chart is the most concerning piece of the puzzle now for Bitcoin and crypto. We've seen a ton 
of interest come in through the ETF. There's your date there, 7th to the 13th of January, Bitcoin, 100 on that reading for Google. So this is Google trend words, basically what people are searching out there. And we typically see it line up with the prices peaking or bottoming. Now, that was the peak so far, $49,000. Since then, Every week has been getting less and less and less. So, so the interest in the search term of Bitcoin has been going down, although the price has been going up. Could this time be completely different? We will see. But the majority of the time you, you see the peaks in the reading here, so the interest over time peak with certain key events. March 2023, in particular, these two weeks was the banking crisis. Bitcoin fell out of bed, pushed low quickly and then bounced away heavily from that point. That was your banking crisis, big boom up from uh, that point in time. And basically, we really haven't seen too much interest. October was the breakout, big strong volume again. So we had a breakout on strong volume. Here is October. We saw that nice big strong breakout. Everyone got involved again, roughly around $31,000 to $33,000. We saw it again in December, so early December. Let's have a look at the chart of BTC. So early December is right here. There it is. More volume just picking up. And then we saw the final volume here at the peak for the ETF. Huge volume, but it was in the opposite direction, not the direction that we wanted to see. So the volume has still been dropping off. This is on Coinbase, so the biggest one that uh, the Americans use. And basically that interest has dropped off. Crypto interest has also dropped off. So we want to see this thing at least turn around and start to put in uh, higher lows, higher highs and see that interest come back in. We want to see the volume come back in as I'd gone through earlier in the video for BTC to push through and break through that $49,000. That's what the bulls must see, in my opinion, in my own uh, an analytical opinion for this move to continue on and not just be a sucker's rally into that peak. Now, I've covered a lot in timing. We're getting very, very close to any sort of final bottom here at a higher low, which means there's pretty much not much time left to get on board at those lower prices before we get those big booms to the upside. We went through that with the altcoins. We went through it with the ETH bottoming very, very close in time. And again, for BTC as well, if we are to see any sort of corrections, I don't think it's going to be very, very severe. So I'm not worried. I'm just reading the market, sharing my thoughts with you here. So in case you do see moves to the downside and any sort of ridiculous analysts saying, oh, it's got to come back and test 30,000, it seems very, very unlikely. It doesn't seem unlikely to get a pullback, maybe a higher low, but it seems very unlikely that you'll see anything underneath these levels. So I personally would not be waiting for Bitcoin to hit your 30 or 32 or even 35-ish thousand dollars from that point. Now, let's have a look at Chinese New Year as we uh, hit the Lunar New Year today. Just looking at these dates from this website here. So in case you're wondering where I'm getting the dates from, I'm looking at the Chinese Lunar New Year and turns. So just something special at the end of this video for a, a Chinese New Year date. We're looking at what's happened on previous Chinese Lunar New Year's. The big red arrows are the Lunar New Year's themselves. They have worked relatively well in the past. If you're in a bull market and you buy on those days, the price pretty much doesn't see that same price again. Or if it does, it, it doesn't go too much lower. Now, I'm running out of time on this, but I just want to share those particular points with you here. Last year, 2023, if you just bought uh, on Chinese Lunar New Year, the price only went down 4% from that point and then 12%. So you had the first dip and then the banking crisis low and then the market was up from that and it never saw those prices again. That was under 22,000. And if you guys are following me on Twitter or X, you might have remembered I tweeted then saying anything under 22 is going to be phenomenal buying. That was my tweet. Bitcoin under 22 was beautiful times. So yeah, we got that and nothing has happened from there. So in terms of where we currently sit for price, if you're just to buy on this lunar new year, the ninth here or the 10th here, uh, let's use the low that we currently have to the downside. 4% is basically to those tops at 43,000 and then 12% is a higher low from the 38 and a half thousand. So it only take you to about 39 to $40,000 as well from those particular uh, price points of that low. So if you're okay with those potential losses, they're not guaranteed, but potential drawdown, then why not? It's not that big of a deal. However, in previous years, especially 2021, it wasn't so clear cut. Should you have been buying at $48,500 or selling at $48,500? And we're basically at that exact point again, three years later. 
$48,000 to $49,000 for the peak in Bitcoin around the Lunar New Year. It's pretty interesting stuff. But in 2022, very easy. Just sell on Chinese New Year, dump the price. Buy again, Chinese New Year, price comes up. Uh, buy in 2020, yes, you had to sit through COVID, but basically COVID broke every other model and indicator out there. But if you bought in 2020, you'd be doing pretty damn well. If you bought Chinese New Year in 2019, you'd be doing phenomenally well. If you sold it in the bear market of 2018, yeah, sure, it went up a little bit more, only 10% really, but then it dumped from that point. If you bought it in 2017, it was basically, it barely even touched that low price again. And then of course, you'd be on a phenomenal bull market for 2017. If you bought it in 2016, phenomenal bull market, it barely went underneath that price. Again, you can see that's Chinese New Year there, 2016, did not go underneath that price. And if you bought it in 2015, it did go under a little bit more, but you'd be sitting pretty if you could hold through that accumulation period. Now, a few other indicators back here, they all worked out relatively well as well, but I'll leave it there for today. Like and subscribe. I'll be back again with another video very, very soon. Have a fantastic weekend. Let us know in the comment section if you're getting up to anything this weekend. Otherwise, I'll see you back here for another massive video. Till then, take care and peace out.